Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we're going to be talking about the Restoration Shaman versus Preservation Evoker and this is going to be mainly a Mythic Quest video but I will talk about raiding at the end and why am I doing this video? Why am I comparing these two healers? Because I am playing them right now. My Restoration Shaman just completed their force and my Preservation Evoker has forced it already. I've got the good trinkets, I've been doing a lot of Mythic Plus environments and I want to compare both of these healers especially for new players coming into World of Warcraft wondering which healer to play. Hopefully this video is going to help you with your decision because I will be covering the positives and negatives of each of these specs. And I'm going to start off with Restoration Shaman because I have quite a few things to say, some negative and some positive about Shaman because I think they've been really hyped up ever since this patch release. Most people place Resto Shaman as the absolute S tier healer, no one comes close to them and my opinion about them has changed a lot ever since acquiring the new tier set. Now this is not news to me because I did do a lot of testing and I saw this already coming in terms of the new tier set being somewhat iffy i want to say iffy in terms of the performance because there are multiple builds emerging to restoration shaman in mythic Plus environments because of the tier set for most of the classes out there especially if you're running something like season one tier set when you acquire season two tier set you want to or expect some sort of increase in terms of hps or increase in terms of gameplay but for restoration shaman that increase felt very limited that's how i'm going to say because of how it impacts your mythic Plus gameplay or how it doesn't impact your mythic Plus gameplay and because of this we have to go and look at the talent build so this is my resto shaman right now and again i've been playing a lot of keys i've been messing around again i do have the four set my resto shaman's item level is a little bit lower than preservation evoker but it's, it shouldn't make too big of a difference so this is probably the most popular resto shaman build in season one coming into season two before you get your four set and things like that you're basically running the chain heal build you're basically running tide bringer you're basically running and this is very 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 important Flow of the Tides is basically something that made Resto Shaman really strong because your chain healers will provide a lot of burst healing. And even though a lot of the dungeons right now, they do have a lot of raw type of damage, there is a lot of burst healing needs in Mythic Plus dungeons. And having Flow of the Tides meant that you could heal up the, a lot of your group party, especially in AU situations because your chain heal felt a lot stronger. Now, once you got your four set bonus and the whole purpose of the four set bonus right now, for the people who don't know the four set bonus, it's all about spreading your Riptides, using your Healing Rain, and then that is going to buff your overall healing and also buff certain healing abilities. For example, a lot of the times people would press Riptides, they'll cast Healing Rain, and then they'll use something like Chain Heal in AoE situations. So that would be something like a bread and butter rotation when you need that AoE healing and shamans would do that. Unfortunately, because of the fact that Flow of the Tides removes Riptides, it made maintaining Riptides really awkward, so a lot of people might switch to Ancestral Reach. Now, I did try the Ancestral Reach build, and I did try to play towards that force set bonus. Unfortunately, I wasn't a huge fan of it, because you're still losing out a lot of that burst healing potential, especially for certain dungeons where you need to heal people in like a second or two, or otherwise they're going to, they're going to be dead. So, I wasn't a huge fan of Ancestral Reach. I know a lot of people were trying this, this out. So, I was pretty down about the whole aspect of Resto Shaman, especially after acquiring force set, because I did not get how do I say, an increase in HPS that I was expecting, especially when compared to Preservation Evoker, and we'll talk about Preservation Evoker later down the line. So I decided for a lot of the keys that I'm not going to play towards the 4 set bonus at all, I'm just going to leave it. It's not that good anyways, especially in Mythic Plus, it's probably better in raids, but in Mythic Plus I was like, screw this, I'm just going to play Flow of the Tides, I'm going to play like I usually do, maintain Riptides, cast Chain Heal, and that Chain Heal is going to provide a lot of burst healing, and that's going to go into my Cloud Burst, and all of that good things. I did notice that there's also another build emerging for Restoration Shamans especially, and this is called something like, I want to say Primordial Wave build, where you basically get rid of your mana type talents, you maybe not even pick any of these talents here, and you buff your improved Primordial Wave, and then you get cooldown reduction to your Primordial Wave. And this build is somewhat different to what you're currently running. It still involves casting Chain Heal, it still involves getting a good value from your High Tide or Tide Bringer and things like that, High Tide and Tide Bringer, but this means that you're going to be putting a lot more emphasis in something like maintaining Riptides on as many people as possible, which is easier because you don't run Flow of the Tides, maintaining your Cloud Burst and then using Healing Wave, which is going to be a lot stronger because of the improvements that you picked up. I did run this build in multiple dungeons and some of the high tyrannical dungeons and 
honestly felt okay. This build still requires you to maintain a lot of riptides. You still have to press riptides no matter what because especially if you run flow of the tides you still have to maintain riptides but there was a lot more emphasis on promoting wave. I honestly don't know how to feel about this build right now. I think I can see why certain people would run this especially in something like high tyrannical keys where efficiency because mana can't be an issue for restoration shaman and this is why my conclusion of shaman right now if you're watching this video is that I think resto shaman is not the best healer in mythic plus content above everyone else I think it is a very solid healer I think it's very strong this is why I did my tier list back in the day where I placed resto shaman with a lot of other healers I think shaman is an amazing healer especially in high coordinated content where people use defensives you can use your your healing cooldowns in a good way you can optimize your cloud burst and then you can focus on damage because resto shaman damage can be very very strong but when approaching high tyrannical keys especially high tyrannical keys I actually feel sometimes scared playing my resto shaman because I might not have enough sustained healing which build do I run do I focus on my four set do I play around my tier set do I just screw it or say screw it and just play with flow of the tides and just press chain heal for those big burst moments I'm not 100% sold on Resto Shaman in terms of being a comfort pick. I don't think Resto Shaman is a healer that provides the most HPS or can meet every single healer check in poke situations. And I stress that poke situations because the big advantage of Resto Shaman is their damage. But if you have to heal or meet those healing checks, you might not even be able to do as much damage as you want. So, and this is why I know so many people will come down to my stream and they're like, hey, Matskis, I'm playing Resto Shaman. I got the four set. I feel weaker. I got the four set or I'm playing my Resto Shaman. I'm running out of mana because maybe I'm not playing it efficiently maybe I'm spamming too much chain heal I'm having a lot of troubles and again I have to tell you you need an organized group or you need to know how to play Resto Shaman correctly with the right talents in order how to optimize your tier set to get good value out of it I don't think Resto Shaman is by far the best healer in Metagross I think it is a very solid healer I think it is on par with a lot of other healers but definitely not in my eyes as the only healer to play unless you're pushing for the highest keys in the world where you can optimize everything and optimize your DPS on the flip side I don't want to be too negative about Restoration Shaman because I still think they're a top tier healer I think they're very strong if you can play them right they do have a lot of utility in terms of mythical stone just because you have things like you know aoe stone you have a knockback or knock up with something like thunderstorm you have purge you have d curse you have bloodlust and because of your range again we're going to compare it to preservation of ochre your chain heal bounces with tidebringer feel really impactful depending on which talents you play so if you know how to play your wrestle shaman you can make it work but in my eyes it is not the best healer above everyone else by a mile i don't believe that so that leads us to preservation of ochre and i don't want to spend too much time on the ochre but i generally think think evoker is rising because of the tier set if you look at some of the numbers in raids if you look at again i don't want to talk about pure hps that you can achieve in raids we'll talk about that a little later on but this is my evoker right now and i've been playing my evoker i've been asked to main evoker by my guild and this is why i've been playing a lot of preservation evoker people were asking me aren't you maining resto shaman resto shaman is my number one choice but because guild asked me to play evoker i decided to do what they say this is probably one of the most popular builds right now for preservation evoker don't look at the class side too much because the change I'm picking up sleepwalk because of incorporeal in the same way that I might be picking up hex as restoration shaman but this is very very popular right now in terms of providing a decent amount of damage with things like life forces mender this this is like referred to as a damage build but I honestly feel like this build is more than enough to help you sustain or carry through a dungeon through the pure HPS that Preservation of Ogre can provide. Now I have a point in Grace Period and I have a point in something like Spiritual Clarity. You can mess around with those, but generally speaking, a lot of people when they're preparing for a lot of damage, let's say damage is happening in a couple of seconds or something like that, they might use Temporal Anomaly with Resonating Sphere, apply a bunch of echoes on people, and they use Reversion. That Reversion is going to give you a buff through Grace Period, and then they're setting up for AoE, a group healing with things like Spirit Loom and Dream Breath, because they feel insanely insanely strong for preservation of Oka because of the four set bonus if you go to the four set bonus for evoker right now the two set bonus by itself changes the whole gameplay of again it changes your gameplay in raids mainly because you start playing spirit bloom but in mythic plus it just makes your dream breath stronger and spirit bloom a lot stronger you're still using reversion as a preservation of Oka in mythic plus because of grace period because you can apply or you can apply those shields with temporal anomaly you can apply those reversions you can get more healing through grace period and then you can do your spirit room 
Spirit Bloom, and I'm, I have to stress this multiple times, Spirit Bloom feels insanely powerful in terms of the amount of healing it provides because you have the two set bonus. Your Dream Breath is more powerful and if you can hit people with Dream Breath in multiple situations, honestly, it feels like free healer. It feels the amount of healing you can provide as Preservation of Ochre right now feels very, very strong. Now, the four set bonus in terms of Mythic Plus, I don't think it's the most impactful bonus in the game out there because it mainly gives you things like Essence Burst and you might be like, what am I going to use my Essence Burst right now? I don't want to use Echoes. There's no healing needed. But you can also always dump those extra essences or dump those essence bursts into something like disintegrate because you have energy loop which will in turn give you mana and therefore preservation of ochre feels like a type of feel that you can do tyrannical keys provide insane amount of healing i feel very safe with preservation of ochre and then never run out of mana because you're dumping your essence bursts from your force set bonus into disintegrate with energy loop which in turn gives you mana and therefore i feel extremely comfortable healing any tyrannical keys as preservation of ochre now there are are huge downsides to preservation of ochre range 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 the limitations of your healing range can be felt through couple of bosses out there especially in tyrannical weeks i did say that i feel very comfortable with evoker but the fact that you can do now taros the first boss the mammoth you might feel like you're struggling because a lot of people might be trying to dodge the waves they might be spread all over the place and you can't hit them with your dream bread and your dream bread is such a bread you know bread and butter ability but you still have spirit bloom if you can maintain that properly with echoes and things like that because your spirit bloom two set bonus works with echoes which means that if you can play your evoker properly i genuinely believe in terms of meeting healing requirements evoker feels a lot easier to play than rest of shaman besides couple of specific bosses and that's not even talking about the healing build the preservation of focus could have for example if you're doing a dungeon where you feel like i don't want to provide a lot of damage or again a lot of people might take points away from here they might put points in power nexus they might put points in renewing breath this makes your dream breath which are two set bonus i don't even know it has to be one of the most powerful abilities in that to be honest dream breath absolutely insane and then you can have multiple points in grace period and then all of a sudden you can ramp up for those again temporal anomalies echoes reversions then damage happens you have your grace period you're pressing your spirit bloom you're pressing your dream breath no one is ever going to die i don't ruin this build because i don't need that much healing i still feel this build with life giver's flame provides me additional damage it still provides a decent amount of healing i think this build is more than good enough to heal every single key out there right now but on the flip side, in terms of negative things about Preservation of Mocha, we talked about the range limitations, especially in pogues or groups that have a lot of range. Let's say you have multiple hunters and they're just standing in different areas of the room, you're going to have a bad time. But if you have a group that knows that you're an Avoca, knows your range limitations, I think your healing can be very strong. But your DPS output, because you're missing out from Season 1 4 set bonus. I know there's so many Avocas out there who really, really struggled in terms of losing their Season 1 4 set bonus because it gave away the possibility of having instant cast living flame and instant cast living flames did tend to fill in one of the big problems with evoker which still has the same issues in terms of sustained single target healing a lot of the times if someone needs that burst healing you might be using something like echoes into verdant embrace or verdant embrace if you know they're going to die instantly and that can put you in some sticky situations if you don't know how to manage your verdant embrace movement so there is a lot of issues with evoker in terms of managing that spot healing or sustained single target healing the fact that you don't have instant cast limiting flames but honestly over the last few weeks in terms of playing evoker i tend to or i managed to live without instant cast living flames i'm just focusing more on spirit bloom dream breath and things like that td or time dilation is very very strong if someone's about to die because it's one of the strongest cooldowns out there in terms of the short cooldown in terms of what it does and just a quick overview in terms of rating i don't want to talk too much this is the hbf chance right now for abers in terms of mythic 75 percentile this is something that i kind of predicted in terms of preservation of ochre i expected them to be the top hbs healer once people pick up that tier set because the tier set for preservation of poker is extremely impactful the two set bonus the four set bonus the two set bonus changes how you play the game and it's not a surprise to me that evokers are one of the top hps healers right now it's not a huge surprise to me to see resto shamans dipping because they were a lot higher a couple of weeks back because a couple of weeks back the sample size here did not have all the tier set now the tier set has been let's assume that a lot of the players here who are doing mythic content they probably have the four set already and the Resto Shaman force in terms of pure HPS has dipped a little bit, but the fact is Resto Shaman in raid still provides a lot of utility. You have things like Spirit Link Totem and you have things like Ancestral Vigor, which honestly is insanely powerful in certain fights where you need to survive big AoE damage. The fact that you can increase your 
HP by playing Resto Shaman is a big deal. And honestly, a lot of people were running Resto Shaman not only because of Ancestral Vigor, because of multiple things that Resto Shaman brings, but Ancestral Vigor was definitely something that was helping Resto Shaman stay in the top. So, generally speaking, if you're someone who's looking to top HPS meters right now in terms of Mythic Plus content or a healer that can really carry healing in terms of Mythic Plus or in terms of raid situations, I genuinely believe Preservation of Ochre is one of the top HPS healers right now, depending on which build you run. If you want or play and organize content or want a healer that provides insane amount of damage, we'll have to see how Resto Shaman possible changes will impact them in 10.15 10 because Blizzard has indicated they might do something with Resto Shaman. But right now, if you're looking for a healer that can really blast damage, Resto Shaman is a really fun healer. I think it is one of the most fun healers because you have a lot of ways of optimizing your DPS, optimizing your healing. It is still a relatively simple healer because Resto Shaman has a large range, healing range, when you compare it to something like Preservation Evoker, your chain heal still feels impactful, but I am genuinely let down by the fact that your four set bonus did not feel all that impactful. I kind of knew or expected that already because I did a lot of PTR testing, but I still felt a little bit sad because you have to have a concern consistent or correct build for every dungeon if you want to optimize your resto shaman so i'm not trying to be really down on resto shaman or bring them down or telling you not to play resto shaman resto shaman and preservation of ochre they're both top tier healers they're both insanely strong in all forms of content i just wanted to say that a lot of tier lists out there they're saying resto shaman is the only and one healer to play in meta plus content i agree to some extent if you're playing in an organized group where you can pump damage because the main reason to bring resto shaman or the main differentiating factor for Resto Shaman versus other healers is their damage. But I genuinely believe that their HPS output, especially if you're trying to carry a Pug, doesn't really compare to what Preservation of Ochre can do. I feel a lot safer playing high tyrannical keys with Preservation of Ochre than I do with my Restoration Shaman, especially after I acquire those tier sets. So play the heal that you enjoy the most, these are my opinions about both of these specs. I feel safer with Preservation of Ochre in High Tyrannical Keys in Mythic Plus content. I think Resto Shaman, especially in Fortified Keys, where the healing output might not be as high, I think it is a lot better because it just provides more damage with that Acid Rain and a bunch of other buttons that you can press as Resto Shaman to provide a lot of carry potential. Again, the interrupt is insane for Resto Shaman. So I think based on which week you're doing, all of these healers can feel a little bit different. Play whichever healer you enjoy the most, but I'm just trying to say the healing balance is a lot closer than most people think it is, especially in Mythic Plus content. I think the healing balance or restoration shaman spot in Mythic Plus tier list is a lot closer to other healers than other people seem to perceive. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.